Hey yo, what's goodies in these hoodies? So, um, welcome to another MP tutorial. Today we are going to be doing um, a multi-part shindig on oscillator sync and oscillator sync leads. Um, so it's going to be a three-parter. Part one is going to be this um, the theory behind oscillator sync. What's actually happening when we do oscillator sync? We're going to do that inside of Reason. Um, because we have uh, Thor, which allows us to have very precise control over some VA um, oscillator sync. And then we are going to jump to Ableton Live, um, where, we're, where we're going to use Massive to recreate a lead from Dog Blood and a sync stab from Armin Van Buren. Um, so let's listen to what those sound like so you can decide whether or not you want to be here or not. So here is the dog blood reference. And then here is uh, my patch. So uh, pretty cool, pretty cool. As you will see when we make the patch, um, there's lots of room for tonal variation. Um, Massive has a limitation, which makes it really hard to get the precise values that I want. Um, however, it's pretty cool. It's pretty close. Um, a lot of great theory behind it. Um, you'll be able to make a lot of really cool timbres with that patch right there. Um, and then we've got this Armin Van Buren thing, which is where the whole idea came from. I had this student. He was like, yo, how do I make this sound? I was like, you're doing it all wrong. This is a sync lead. Um, and that's how this whole this whole thing came up, because sync leads are um, not... I, I don't really think they're in style right now. Um, they were very big in the 90s. Um, but this is what the Armin Van Buren thing sounds like. So I guess they must be in style if Armin Van Buren's doing it. There's Armin using it with some heavily sidechained reverb to spice the whole shindig up. All right, cool. Um, so let us jump back to Reason, where we can talk about oscillator sync. Um, so oscillator sync is uh, it's pretty difficult to put into words if you're not familiar with what oscillator phase is. If you're not familiar with what phase is. So let me let me try and let me try and talk about what phase is really quickly. Um, so basically, I'm going to how what's the easiest way to talk about phase? As you can tell, I'm winging this a little bit. Let's jump to massive and let's look at the LFO section, because in massive's LFO section, um, we are looking at a monocyclic waveform that goes from 0 degrees to 360 degrees. So in this sine wave up here, in LFO5, the sine wave up here, this is a monocyclic waveform. This is a sine wave that re that has one cycle to it, repeats one time um, in this little snapshot that we have. And we can take this snapshot and map it out in degrees. So all the way to the left over here where, we're, where I'm flicking my uh, my clicker around, my pointer, um, this would be zero degrees of the wave. This is the zero degree mark. And all the way to the right would be 360. Right here in the middle would be 180. Right here would be 90. This would be 270, assuming that mass is dividing it up like that. Um, and that's what oscillator, oscillator phase is. And when, we, uh, when we're moving oscillators around, layering them on top of each other, if they're not in the same phase, we get phase cancellation. So I can move this oscillator and be like, now you are going to start at 90 degrees phase, or now you're going to start at 360 degrees phase, or now you're going to start at zero degrees of phase, okay? Um, and that's an important concept which is kind of crucial to understanding what phase is, and, and more importantly, what, you know, sound is, what is frequency in relation to, like, cycles and all this stuff. Um, so let's jump back to Thor and talk about what oscillator sync is. So basically, when an oscillator plays a pitch, um, 
it's operating at a frequency which means that the wave cycles are moving at a certain speed. So if I play, um, I know that A off the top of my head, like middle A is 440 hertz, that means that the saw wave is operating at 440 cycles per second, okay? Think about it like that. Um, so if I play an A right here, that wave is operating at the speed of 440 hertz, that many monocyclic uh, cycles per second is generating that pitch for us, okay? So in oscillator sync, we need two oscillators. We need a master oscillator, which is going to dictate two things. It's going to dictate what the actual pitch is going to be, and the frequency of that master oscillator um, is going to dictate how fast is the slave oscillator going to re-trigger itself from z to start at zero degrees phase according to the frequency of the master. Okay, and that's where this gets very this, that's where this gets confusing for me at least. Um, so here's what I got to do to set up my basic oscillator sync inside of Reason, inside of Thor, inside of any you know regular subtractive synth that allows you to do oscillator sync. I need a second oscillator. I'm going to turn off oscillator one because this is my master, and we want to hear the output of oscillator two because oscillator two is now that I've synced it. Now oscillator 2 is a slave, and it is the slave to oscillator 1, which is the master, okay? So the master is going to dictate two things. It's going to dictate what is our output pitch going to be, and it's going to dictate um, at what speed is oscillator 2, the slave oscillator, at what speed is oscillator 2's phase position going to restart? Okay, and then oscillator 2 is going to kind of dictate the timbre because its pitch is never going to change um, relative to the master oscillator. What's going to be happening is the master oscillator is going to be re-triggering the phase position, which is going to maintain the pitch of the master while creating these like tearing, ripping, really cool sounds. So, you'll notice that when I drop them by, if I drop the master by an octave, oscillator 2 now starts to get this buzziness to it. And if I really drop os like the master really below um, the slave, you can hear the speed at which the slave is re-triggering its phase position. Right, you can hear that there. When we speed that up to super amounts to play with the pitch of the slave, that's where we get the ripping, tearing, sync lead sounds. So I can just leave it an octave below, and now I'm going to map the pitch using modifiers rotary one to oscillator two pitch. So now, no matter what I do to oscillator two's pitch, um, the actual pitch of the output that we're going to be hearing is coming from the slave. So it's always going to be whatever note I play. So if I'm going to play an F here, even if I do this, we're still hearing an F. What we're hearing there is we're hearing the slave oscillator change pitch, but it's being like locked down in a hard sync mode to the pitch and phase reset of the master oscillator. So we're retaining the pitch while creating this like resonant, gr like ripping peak um, according to the slave oscillator. So the slave oscillator controls the timbre and the master oscillator controls the pitch. We can think about it like that. So oscillator one is controlling the pitch and oscillator two is now going to control the timbre. So I can also route, let's say, the mod envelope to um, oscillator 2's pitch.
All right. So hopefully that gives you somewhat of a grip on what oscillator sync is doing. Um, if all the stuff I said before was getting lost in you, the way that you can think about it is that the slave oscillator controls the timbre. And the master oscillator controls the pitch. Okay, so let's jump to Massive now and take a look at Massive's wavetable oscillators and see why I needed to even go through this. Uh, you know, why would this have been confusing in the first place? Okay, so the reason that this would have been confusing in the first place is because. Massive is a wavetable synthesizer. It's not actually like doing subtractive uh, synthesis if we're not using the filters. Um, it's not using calculations to generate waves in real time. What it's doing is basically playing back in almost like a sample player. It's playing back monocyclic waveforms like we were talking about right down here. These snapshots of uh, monocyclic waves that we can cycle between in like a crossfade fashion. Uh, crossfading between these monocyclic waves to get timbral variations. So the reason I'm going over that is because when we go over to these VA waveforms, um, the pulse width mod and the sync oscillators, we're not actually doing any real sync here. What we're doing is we're saying that the pitch we define up here is going to be our master pitch and then the sync is going to be basically like the slave's pitch. Okay? Um, and that's all you gotta know. So the sync is gonna change the timbre and the pitch over here is actually going to be like our master oscillator. Um, so that's gonna give us the pitch that we actually are going to be hearing. So without further ado, let us recreate this sync lead. So I'm going to hit file new sound here and let's get right to it. So the first thing we need is we need to adjust our amp envelope and um, you know nine times out of ten I like to always just start it with it up all the time. Um, and Massive, when you hit File New Sound, apparently, likes to start you off just like that. So we're good to go on the amp envelope. Remember, Massive is semi-modular, so I can route things wherever I want them to. And right now, um, Envelope 4 is always routed to the amp by default. So the second thing I want to do is I want to go to the Voice tab, and I want to make this monophonic, um, because it's a lead sound, and I'm not trying to get any chords here. I'm trying to just, you know, get my lead on. Cool beans. Okay, so then, you know, it's time to start building the sync sound. So let's get right on to that. Okay, so I gotta go to my wavetables and I gotta get on this pulse saw sync wave. And like we just went over, this is an emulation of a sync oscillator. Our sync wavetable slider here is going to be giving us the terrible variation, basically the pitch of the slave oscillator. And, um, our pitch over here is going to be giving us the master, um, the master oscillator's pitch. So I'm going to bring this down to negative 12, which is um, 12 semitones down and octave below. And to start, I'm going to slide this all the way over to a pulse wave, aka a square wave, um, so we can start building our sync sound. So watch what happens if I turn up the sync here. So I like where that I, I like how that's sitting right there. And if we go back to the dog blood dog blood reference, let's see what else we hear happening to this sync. So I hear some sort of what honestly sounds like a pitch fall. Um, but the trick here is that because it's a sync oscillator, the pitch is not really changing. What's changing 
is the uh, is the pitch of the slave oscillator. That's what's creating that resonant peak fall. And you might think, oh, well, then I should use like a, a filter with a high resonant peak or something like that to create that kind of motion. But the trick here is to recognize that this is actually the sound of sync oscillating or hard, or hard sync oscillators. That's what this sounds like. So that's how I was able to know, you know, that's a sync oscillator and not um, a filter or some other thing. You can get similar effects with filters or like a narrow band EQ or something, but if you want, you know, this sound, this is this is this is why you would want to use sync in the first place for this desired sound effect. So, to get that effect, what I need to do is use another envelope. I'm going to use envelope 3 here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to route that to basically the pitch of the slave oscillator. Drag it up like that. So now I'm getting a pitch fall effect without losing the uh, the F sharp pitch of the of the tone in the first place, just creating that oscillator sync movement. So that sounds really good right there. Okay. Um, now what's missing here from the dog blood sound now is that really, you know, like that that grittiness to it, that kind of that dirtiness. Um, and if I'm ever missing dirtiness, one of the first things that I'm always going to try is I'm going to try and create um, some sort of sideband-ish distortion, okay? So you might have heard the term sideband from something like FM where we're, where we're creating sidebands by using frequency modulation at super, super fast rates uh, with, side wa uh, with sine waves, and that's what creates these, these sidebands all over the place. That's what makes the wave brighter in the first place. So the same thing can be said um, in regards to any sort of modulation. If we take any sort of modulator, which would be anything in this box down here, um, our modulation oscillator, if we're ever taking one source and using it as a modulator against another source and do that at a super fast audio rate, um, we're essentially going to be creating a brighter wave with sidebands, okay? So the way I'm going to do that here is with an LFO. I'm going to use an LFO at a very, very, very fast audio rate um, to modulate the pitch of the slave oscillator. And that is going to give me that desired grittiness that I'm after. And I'm going to do this by a very small amount, but you're going to hear the effect um, almost instantaneously. So I'm going to bop this up literally just like probably that much. I don't know. We'll play with it. And now I'm going to change. I'm going to change my LFO to a to a saw wave. I'm just kind of in that mood. I'm going to put my crossfade curve up all the way, so we're only getting the saw wave. And then I'm just going to bring the rate up until it starts to venture into the audible range of hearing. The LFO is going to be going so fast that it's going to start creating um, sidebands around the tone in the first place. So now it's going really fast. Without the modulation, and then with it, so now that we've got this gritty, um, this gritty modulation happening on our pulse wave sync lead, we need to add some more of that straight, clean timbre on top. So what I decided to do here was add another sync oscillator. and leave that on the saw mode. So we 
because the, the dog blood lead has a very saw-like quality to it. It, I just, it, it feels, I'm feeling like I'm hearing a saw wave on top of it, so I'm opting for the saw wave uh, sync lead here in the wave table. Okay, so here's where Massive's limitation really kind of bugs me. Um, but what's also cool about it is you'll hear that the slightest uh, variation can create totally new timbres. So what I need to do here is because the pitch is so sensitive here, I need to match these sync pitches up um, exactly to get the ex to make sure that the, that the slave oscillators are hitting the same pitch. However, I can't do that. There's no way to um, to turn these sync knobs at the same time unless I was using a macro, which is sloppy to me for some reason. So I just need to ballpark it here. Um, so I'm going to leave my sync like right there. I'm going to use the same envelope and I'm going to try and get the same amount as best I can. I need to drop my oscillator 2 pitch down. All right, so that sounds that sounds pretty good to me. That sounds like a good start for the sync lead right here. Okay, cool. So the last thing I need to do is I need to create a macro control to be able to rise um, my pitches at the same time like the dog blood lead does. You'll notice that if we listen to the dog blood lead, it sounds like it's rising in pitch even though the pitch is staying the same what's actually changing is the pitch of the slave oscillators aka our sync knob here in massive so that's really easy to do i'm going to take macro 2 down here i'm going to call it slave pitch and i'm going to throw that on to my sync boxes I can turn it up all the way like I want. Gonna try and ballpark them the same so that when I do turn it up, it uh it turns on the same amount. And then I'm gonna turn on that automation and let's see what happens there. So I exaggerated it there a little bit more than I did in my original patch, um, but just watch as the macro 2 goes up, both of these sync uh, knobs are going to slide up, which means that the slave oscillator pitches are going to be sliding, so we're getting that rise in pitch. Okay, very, very cool. So that is going to be um, the end of my dog blood lead. So let's cut this video here, and then the next one will pick up and do the Armin lead. All righty.